Let's go ahead and look at our first example of an outside shock to our full ISMP and aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Let's say that this shock is a decrease in household wealth. So this could be, you know, stock markets going down or housing prices going down, whatever, but household wealth starts to go down. Well, what's this going to do? This is going to make our C bar part of our consumption function decrease. We know that that's included in my IS curve, which will decrease, which we know that'll also lead to my aggregate demand decreasing. So let's go ahead and add those things in. So I'll add in a straight line here. Let's say that this is my IS curve. So this is IS curve with the wealth decreasing. And we know that that also will give us a decrease in aggregate demand. Again, let's just label that aggregate demand with my decrease in wealth. And what about the MP curve? Well, MP curve is only changes with monetary policy, and that has not happened, so we're definitely not seeing a change with MP at this point. So I'm going to get our new point as point B, and we know point B is going to have a lower inflation and a lower level of output. Now I can go up here to my IS curve, now I know where that point B is as well, and everything's going to line up. We have a lower level of real interest at point B, a lower level of real interest at point B, our MP curve has a point B, so now we see inflation lower at point B. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look at three different responses. We'll start here with no policy response. Put this in a different color, no policy response. So what happens if there's no policy response at all? Well, that means that we are going to have what we call the self-correcting mechanism going on. And what happens? Well, at point B, we have a negative output gap. So a negative output gap, right? You see that right here. Our current level of output is less than potential GDP. This is a negative output gap. Because of this negative output gap, we have slack developing in the labor market, right? We remember slack from the labor market back in the uh, fourth week of class. As you remember, slack in the labor market is when there's lots of people who are unemployed, not a lot of jobs available for them. So because of that, we end up seeing wages having some downward pressure. So wages go downward. And because wages going down, prices starting to go down, we know that expected inflation starts to decline. And if it's expected inflation starts to decline, our aggregate supply curve, right, our short run aggregate supply curve, uh, shifts back downwards to the long run aggregate supply, and we get back to our potential GDP. So let's go ahead and see how that works, what we're, what we're doing when we have no policy response is that aggregate supply curve is coming back to our long run aggregate supply. And this is because, right, inflation has started to fall and it's gonna just start to fall more until we get to the expected lower level. So here would be point C, so we'd have a lower level of inflation but we would get back to, we would have closed that output gap. So we close that output gap. So point C is going to be on that same IS curve, right? There was no policy, there was no outside shock. This is just prices changing. With lower prices come these lower interest rates. So that's gonna be interest rate C. And if we go all the way over, we'll have this to be interest rate C. Point C again along our stable MP curve because again, there was no policy that occurred. And we could see 
everything lines up. Lower inflation, lower real interest rate, lower real interest rate. And this is how we would show the economy adjusting itself back from an aggregate demand recession. So this is self-correcting. Next, we're going to go ahead and we can, we'll see how monetary policy will correct for this and also how fiscal policy will correct for this.